Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is an opportunity uh, with this House Bill uh, 2342 to fix uh, an unintended consequence of uh, the vapor tax uh, that was part of the budget, the 40 percent wholesale, and switching it to uh, five cents per milliliter of the e-liquid. Um, some folks have, have uh, as I've pushed this bill through uh, this past summer, some folks have asked, how did I come up with five cents per milliliter? Uh, my first question to the industry, to the retail business folks, was what does North Carolina do? And the reason I picked North Carolina was that's the tobacco capital of the United States. So I figured that would probably be a good place to start uh, was to look at what North Carolina does to a competing product. So uh, they do the, the same as this bill proposes, a five cent per milliliter. Uh, again, as I worked this through the summer, the question often came up, is this going to be revenue neutral? And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure. You have to go back in history and understand that prior to 2006, there was no vaping industry. There were no e-cigarettes per se. This is relatively in the last decade an industry that has gone from nothing to a multi, multi-billion dollar industry worldwide. Here in Pennsylvania, we have currently, as of last month, 357 vape shops in the Commonwealth. Those folks uh, typically employ three to four full-time employees. Um, so, and it's growing exponentially. It's just growing as people look for alternatives to tobacco products. Now is not the time to destroy or hamper or injure a business in Pennsylvania that's, that's growing and prospering and, and employing folks. Um, after the budget was passed and it was scheduled for October 1, when this 40 percent wholesale tax was to, to kick in, it was during that period of time that representatives of that industry started to poll the owners of these vape shops. That's how they came up with, uh, I believe it's around, that each vape shop on average sells approximately 385,000 milliliters per year. So if you do real quick math on the number of milliliters sold in the Commonwealth, it gives us about 6.8 million at that nickel per milliliter. Is that accurate? I think it's more accurate than some of the other numbers I've seen thrown around. Um, and keep in mind that half the business is vape and half the business is, is the e-cigarettes that are sold in the, you know, the C-stores, the 7-Elevens uh, and whatnot. So um, rough projections are it's going to give us about 13.7 million. These are industry numbers. Why is it important that we get away from the wholesale tax and go to the five cent per milliliter retail tax? It's because of competition, and it's called the internet. If we slap a 40, if we do nothing, and this vape industry in Pennsylvania is slapped with a 40 percent wholesale tax, they are not competitive with the internet, internet sales. So. I'm here to, to tell my colleagues and, and let them know, based on my research, if we allow this 40 percent to go through, we are guaranteed that we will not get the revenue that we had projected. If we allow these businesses to continue to grow and prosper in Pennsylvania, we may exceed our revenue that we had projected. You know, the Pocono record for those in that neck of the woods projected that 92 percent of the more than 300 vape shops across the state could close as a result of this 40 percent wholesale tax due to internet competition. Um, I have other information that 
I think has already been provided to you by the industry. Uh, if not, please see me afterwards. I can give you more documentation of what we have to work with. Uh, but I encourage the members of this committee to please pass this, encourage our leadership on both sides of the aisle to move this thing and get it to the House floor so that we can fix a wrong that occurred during the budget process that we, I, I don't believe any of us uh, realized how harmful it was going to be to mom and pop businesses in the Commonwealth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.